Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for the invitation to speak on this conference. My name is Joris van Houten. I'm an anesthesiologist and intensivist at the Catherine Hospital in Eindhoven. And in this presentation, I will um, discuss, discuss with you the results of a study in which we evaluated the corrected carotid flow time as a non-invasive parameter for trendocardic output and stroke volume. And for those who are interested, this study was recently published in the Journal of Ultrasound in March 2022. And in the first part of this presentation, I will briefly introduce you to the carotid Doppler ultrasound as a tool to measure carotid blood flow non-invasively. And here I will discuss how it may be beneficial as a point of care modality, how to perform a carotid Doppler ultrasound exam, and the different parameters that can be derived from a pulse wave Doppler signal. And then we'll focus more on the corrected carotid flow time itself. And during the presentation, corrected carotid flow time will be abbreviated as CCFT. In the second part of this presentation, we'll discuss the results of the aforementioned study. And hopefully in the end, there will be some time left to answer any questions. Well, the interest of carotid Doppler ultrasound as a potential point of care modality is quite understandable as the common carotid artery has some favorable characteristics. And for example, the common carotid artery is lying very superficially in the neck of a patient and more central to the heart than the radial or brachial artery. Furthermore, the common carotid artery is easily accessible at the OR or at the ICU and may therefore be a very suitable vessel to assess non-invasively at the bedside. Only a standard echo is needed and which is available in most centers and therefore very cost effective. And furthermore, carotid Doppler ultrasound allows functional dynamic monitoring. During a carotid Doppler examination, the patient is lying supine with the head slightly rotated. And the common carotid artery can be easily visualized with a linear airway transducer with a high frequency rate. As shown in the left lower image, by the way. And in the right upper corner, a short axis colored Doppler image of the common carotid artery is seen. Just lateral from the carotid artery is the internal jugular vein. In the right lower corner, you can see the long axis view of the carotid artery as a nearly straight tube. And this is, however, not always the case, as in some people, the carotid artery may be more curved. And also progressive atherosclerosis may be present, which may distort the image and also greatly affects our Doppler derived parameters. For example, blood flow velocity increases greatly because of narrowing of this vessel. But let's go back to our unaffected vessel, in which a pulse wave Doppler sample can be placed at the center of the carotid artery, in which the maximum angle between blood flow and the ultrasound beam will be kept below 60 degrees. And next, from the pulse wave Doppler velocity signal, we can differentiate between two types of indices. On the one hand, it is blood flow velocity on the i-axis, on the y-axis, and blood flow time on the x-axis. And as we look at the y-axis, blood flow velocities can be measured as a maximum velocity as marked by C in this picture, or the velocity time integral as marked by B. And from the carotid artery diameter, the cross-sectional area can be calculated, which multiplied by the carotid velocity time integral gives us the unilateral carotid blood flow. However, blood flow velocities are dependent on adequate Doppler insonation angles and are therefore prone for measurement inaccuracies. And also manual measurement of the carotid artery diameter is error prone as the diameter changes from the systolic to diastolic phase. And there's also the risk of oblique transection of the vessel. In contrast, carotid flow time can be measured on the x-axis and is much less dependent on insonation angles as imperfect waveforms still yield accurate flow time readings. Therefore, less training may be required for novice sonographers. The systolic flow time is the time from the foot of the systolic upstroke until the incisura of the dichrotic notch as depicted by B. And the complete cycle time runs from the foot of the systolic upstroke until the foot of the next systolic upstroke, as depicted by A. In order to allow standardization, it is needed to correct the systolic flow time for heart rate, as the cycle time shortens when heart rate increases, and also vice versa. 
Accordingly, the corrected corroded flow time is calculated by dividing the systolic flow time by the square root of the cycle time. This corroded flow time can be seen as a proxy for left ventricular ejection time and is therefore proportional to cardiac contractility and left ventricular preload. And it is also inversely proportional to afterload. Therefore, corrected corroded flow time may be related to a patient's cardiac output and stroke volume. In previous studies, however, up to nine different carotid corrected flow time equations have been used to calculate CCFT, of which these three equations that are mentioned here have been cited mostly. And in order to compare studies, it is relevant to know to what extent these equations lead to comparable CCFT outcomes. And this is important as CCFT values have been evaluated to de determine cutoff points for fluid responsiveness. The aim of this study was therefore twofold. And in the first place, we wanted to evaluate the dynamic relationship between CCFT and invasively derived cardiac output and stroke volume. And secondly, we wanted to compare the three most commonly used CCFT equations. Therefore, we performed a prospective observational study at the OR. 18 coronary artery bypass grafting patients were included. And next, standardized anesthesia, anesthesia was performed and patients were mechanically ventilated at eight mils per, kilo, per kilogram tidal volume and five centimeters of PEEP. Patients were excluded if they had an impaired left ventricular function, moderate to severe valvular disease, carotid artery stenosis, previous brain injury and severe lung disease. A Philips Echo D5 was used together with a Philips broadband linear array transducer. And for cardiac output measurement, the invasive and calibrated pulse contour cardiac output device PICO was used. Simultaneous PICO and pulse wave Doppler measurements from the carotid artery were obtained at three time points. 50 minutes after the induction of anesthesia was called T1. After a passive leg raise, we repeated those measurements, which was called T2. And at the end of surgery, when patients were weaned from the extracorporeal circulation, we called that time point T3. And then six average pulse wave Doppler waveforms were manually traced offline. The patient's characteristics are shown in this table, and importantly, none of these patients had abnormal left or right ventricular function or severe valvular disease. Therefore, the following results are not generalizable to patients with abnormal heart function. In this table, the hemodynamic parameters are shown for the three time points. So again, T1 after induction, T2 after a passive leg raise, and T3 post bypass. And most of these, like mean arterial pressure, stroke volume, resistive index, and tidal CO2, all remained constant. And also anesthetic dosing was stable throughout the study protocol. At T3, cardiac output, as you can see, increased significantly. And you can see that here. And that increase is most likely explained by a higher heart rate as stroke volume remains relatively constant. Now in this figure, the distribution of all CCFT values from T1 to T3 is shown in a violent plot. For the three equations, the width of the kernel corresponds to the numerical density of data at different CCFT values. Paired CCFT values differ significantly depending on the equation used. You can also observe this by the slight differences of the shape of the different kernels. In this figure, the correlation between cardiac output and CCFT in the upper rank and between stroke volume and CCFT in the lower rank can be seen. Here we observed that the correlations differed depending on the equation that was used. Sperman's correlation between CCFT and cardiac output was highest for Bazet's equation. And this correlation was moderate with an R value of 0.43. Sperman's correlation between CCFT and stroke volume was then highest for Woody's equation, but only weak with an R value of 0.33. 
However, the correlation coefficient may not be the best metric to assess in a dynamic study model. After all, at a certain cardiac output level, static CCFT values may differ between individuals, and therefore correlation may never be likely to be strong. Instead, the dynamic changes of hemodynamic indices in time enable evaluation of trending, which, been, which can be assessed through concordance analysis. This was shown in the next figure. And what you can see here is the delta CCFT from T1 to T3 plotted against the delta cardiac output. So if CCFT and cardiac output either increase or decrease in the same direction, then data points are in the upper right or lower left quadrant. And then the percentage of data points in these two quadrants determine the level of concordance. If this level is less than 84%, then the concordance is only poor. If those data points are within those two quadrants, within 84 and 92%, concordance is intermediate. And above 92%, concordance is acceptable. When we look at concordance between CCF2 and cardiac output in the upper rank, it was acceptable for Bezat's equation, as it was 100%. But it was only intermediate acceptable when analyzed by Chambers, and only poor when analyzed by Woody's equation. Concordance between CCFT and stroke volume, as can be seen at the lower rank, was poor for all equations, with a maximum of 82% at Woody's equation. These concordance plots were constructed with exclusion zones of 15% to eliminate low predictive data that lie near the center of the plot. In conclusion, CDU may be a promising future non-invasive hemodynamic point of care modality. And compared to velocity measurements, flow time measurements are less prone and less error prone and easier to learn. Three commonly used CCFT equations lead to different CCFT values, different correlation with stroke volume and cardiac output, and different concordance rates. Now, this information is relevant when studies using different CCFT equations are being compared. The dynamic trending ability of CCFT to detect changes in cardiac output was highest, 100%, for Bazet's equation. However, the ability of CCFT to detect changes in stroke volume was only poor. Thank you for the nice uh, presentation and applause, Joris. <laughs>